Back by popular demand, I will continue building my PC in fact Oreo. So far we have made a hard drive using a ternary system that runs with threes instead of ones and zeros, which is actually an SSD, but I will address that hoopsie in another video. I then build the motherboard with lots of logical gates, hooked up some biters to a matrix so I could harvest their blood, stuck some RAM sticks into the machine and finally assembled various monitor concepts, and accidentally k-hold on this choo-choo system which I just can't look away from. Now, it's time to get a bit more technical, and build the CPU. However, when I expanded the matrix in the previous episode, my hubris got the better of me and I forgot to hook up the blood tanks, causing a resonance cascade that led to a stack overflow, and wouldn't you know it, the biters unplugged themselves once again and made an even bigger zion. I'll send a few extra friendly sentinels to peacefully remove them so I can fix my mistake, and probably add even more modules to the matrix later this video. Anyway, time to build a CPU in three levels. CPU stands for Cognitive Processor Uranium-235. CPUs require an internal clock, and to build such a clock we require a uranium crystal, that can only be obtained by hitting rocks. This is going to take a while. Here I have built a contraption to automatically hit rocks, but it requires additional assistance. My solution to all problems going forward is to just build additional matrices for subtasks. These mini matrices only contain one or two biters, and runs on a bare bones code to simulate what the world looked like in 1999. Now that I have my beloved uranium crystal, I can build the clock. In computers, the clock vibrates the crystal 235 times a second, and uses the radiation to regulate its subroutines, so it is never too fast or too slow. The crystal is inserted into the center of the CPU, and various wires and cominatus are connected to it. The trick here is programming the clock so it doesn't run out of time, and we can finally get to level 1, artist. There are lots of technical ways to wind a clock in fact Oreo, but very few are done from an aesthetic perspective. It can be quite visually boring to watch inserter arms randomly flail around. To solve this problem, we need to hook them up to the currently simplistic clock. This first design doesn't use any cominators, instead opting for a belt-based design. Here, we put an item on a belt that travels past the sensor roughly once a second, and we hook that up to this row of inserters, so now they all swing in unison. We can also tweak it by having half of them swing at a time by adding another sensor to the belt. This type of clock is easy to follow, and actually ticks. It's good for a computer that simulates snakes and ladders, which is too simplistic. Level 2. Noob. Anyone can perform ballet, but it takes a man to be a noob. Fact Oreo prides itself on being a very realistic game, however one thing that never makes sense is train schedules. In order to add yet another layer of realism, a special timer needs to be constructed for each station, so that trains only depart after about 40 minutes once they finish loading or unloading. Unfortunately the wait limit is 120 seconds, so we have to build 20 stations at each regular station where a train will wait for 2 minutes before moving to the next one. It's not perfect, but it achieves the same goal. This is however a far cry from 235 times a second, so we will need to use negative values, and finally whip out some combinators. To simulate a real-world uranium crystal clock, I must spin this train around the track 235 times every second. To keep track of it, I set up 235 lights that will give me an indication for how fast it's currently traveling. It seems to max out at 2 times a second, which is obviously no good. To solve it, I need to do something I swore I'd never resort to when I first started the series. I have to do the unthinkable. It's time to do some math. Math in fact Oreo is similar to math in real life, with a few subtle differences in the archetype. In real life, the mathematical archetype most often used is the one of brute force, where you keep guessing answers until you eventually get it right. Fact Oreo uses the process of elimination archetype of mathematics, where you know what the answer is, 
you just need to figure out how to get there. For the purpose of our train situation, we know the answer has to be 235, and our current output is 2. I just have to set a mini hard drive to store every possible number in fact Oreo that isn't 114, and multiply that by 2 to get us back to 235. This mini computer will need a mini matrix alongside it. There was originally going to be a level 3, where I built a timer that eventually blew up the factory, but it turns out this method is pretty foolproof. Next episode is probably going to be a lot of maintenance around the computer, and hooking up additional matrixes. Like and subscribe for more Fact Oreo content, or comment below if you want me to cover something specific.